Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands. I'm Pete and now that winter's coming in and uh, it's starting to get cold out. Started working on the sleds. Now we're doing a few videos with the sidewinders there. We're going to put some go fast parts on the red and white one. The, the red sled, redneck sled. So uh, we'll uh, do some more videos with that. But in the meantime, I got my old project, the four stroke enticer. Um, going to revamp that and I'll Get it back up and going. I'll do a walk around and show you. It's a Honda 400EX motor in there. And uh, it's not really all that great. She uh, smokes quite a bit. Um, it's good for running around in the summer, keeping mosquitoes away, but uh, that's no good. So I got a big bore kit. We're going to rebuild it and we'll get it up and going. And then my Go Fast Enticer with the phaser motor. I was ripping it around Ian's place there a couple weekends ago when we had some snow. And I launched it off the hill over there. <laughs> And when it hit, it hit harder than Mike Tyson and the carburetor stuck wide open and the thing just buggered off on its own. So I got to pull it in and check, see what's going on with the carburetors on that. So I'll uh, rig this up and uh, get her in the shop and we'll go from there. What we got here is uh, just a piece of water pipe. Well, the two little short ends on it. Pop the hole in each end. Slip her through the holes in the skis, put your strap to it, and when you tow it, follows you nice and straight. It's not going all over the place, running into stuff. So it's a quick, simple way of doing it. All right, we'll pull her in. Well, we got the other one in the shop, and now we got to drag this one in there. I'm a little disappointed in myself there. When I had her out last time, I rolled it and smashed the windshield and broke the speedo off the handlebars and all that jazz. So uh, something's wrong with the carburetors now because she goes wide open when you don't want it to. So let's drag it into, and we'll check her out. Sometimes things just work out for you when you're not even expecting it. When I was dragging it in and it caught the edge of the concrete, the one hook came out of the end of the pipe, but it pulled through and snagged the ski loop there and kept pulling her in, so nice one. <laughs> Maybe not so nice one. After the thing slipped off, handlebar's kind of straight. This ski's kind of straight. That one, not so much. Uh, my alignment's, uh, obviously there's a bent tie rod in there or something, so gotta fix that too. First things first, we'll have a quick look at this beauty. Oh, poor fella. Oh, looks like I was uh, chewing up my uh, cables there. That's uh, no good. So what happened was when I landed that jump, oh, that's full ice. That's great. The uh, Velocity stack smashed off the 
secondary there and buggered that one up. And then she went right full throttle. And I don't know if you can see, I'm not pulling on the throttle right now and that slide is stuck way up. It doesn't really want to come back down. Same with that one. They're supposed to drop all the way to the bottom, so it was a bit of a wild ride. Had to remember to hit the kill switch. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you hit the panic button instead of the shutoff button. But uh, I managed to shut her down, so we'll uh, dig into it. I'll pull the carburetors off and see what's going on. Oh! Oh, that's all the compression right there. Hopefully it didn't fill up with water. We'll check that out. This one here, on the other hand, it's got the Honda 400EX motor. This one hasn't run in oh, a year, maybe a little longer, I guess. So I've got to uh, do a little tinkering on this one. So we'll do one at a time here, but then I'll uh, go through this contraption and uh, maybe we'll get her going too. All right, just having a quick uh, peekaboo at it, and uh, there's the reason why the uh, alignment's a little bit tweaked. That tie rod is uh, folded up like a pretzel. So I think what we're going to do is uh, we'll go to the bar and uh, straighten it out. Usually you go to the bar to get bent, but we're going to be using the bar to straighten her up. And I was uh, just having a quick glance at the throttle here. The... Uh, there's the problem there. Slides are stuck up. And I had a quick look at the carburetors and everything seems to be fine. I think this is gonna be just like uh, light beer. Not that bad. I was looking at the, uh, where the throttle cable goes in. I guess when it hit, she pulled her out. Focus, you bugger. Come on. There we go. So well, this guy here just pulled out of the handlebar. Much better. Huh. Ready to rip again. Now, I'll have to straighten up or fix my focus you. These, uh, Velocity stacks. One's not too bad. Flew apart. I just had, they came with little mesh screens, steel screens. Wrapped them in the old pantyhose. This is the one off the secondary side. It got a little munched. So I'll have to straighten that out. And then, well, the little screen for that one's got to be down. Oh, there she be right down in there. Get in there. There we go. We'll uh, give them the update, get some fresh pantyhose on there. Get them back on. And then, uh, speedo and tack. Oh, well, that's got to be good for it. <laughs> we'll just stick that right back on there. Get some heavy duty zip ties on it. Cable seems okay. Throw a little bit more grease on the chain there and uh, I think this one's good to go. But uh, that wasn't so bad. Then we'll go to that one. A quick little visit with the bar and uh, the skis are back to straightish. Got the uh, <laughs> speedo and tack zip tied back on there. Not so bad. Those are back on. The uh, hood is, uh, well, yeah, whatever. The <laughs> 
Forgot about my roll of Gorilla Tape. That stuff will fix anything. That get, that'll get you out of a jam quicker than anything there. That's the, oh, that's a little bit close there. I might have to do something with that. That's just gonna be rubbing on there, but uh, yeah. A little bit of Gorilla Tape on there. Glossy stacks are back on. Throttle's working. I think we can uh, see if it starts. Okay, so. We should be back to uh, good to go status here. I've got it lifted up just in case. Pew! So, uh, I don't know. We'll give her a few tugs and uh, see if she fires up. Come on, baby. Oh, wow. She's awfully tight. That's a little bit of smoke from the two-stroker there. If I get that one fired up, it'll make more smoke than that. And that's a four-stroke. That's no good. Okay, now back to this beauty here. Now, what's the story with this guy? Well, I had the idea <laughs> That a snowmobile with clutching gears would be kind of cool, so uh, we went with that. I ended up, I ended up with a Honda 400EX. I traded something for, I think, a golf cart or something like that, and I got the four-wheeler and a dirt bike off a guy. Then uh, I figured this would be a perfect power plant to put in the uh, snowmobile. So here it is. <laughs> JP and I we uh, took the secondary all apart there, made a hub for the sprocket. Just used the sprockets from the four-wheeler. And then uh, got her all mocked up in there. I uh, originally got it all done. I had it working and everything. But <laughs> the chain case, the gearing in the chain case and the gearing with the four-wheeler, this thing was all of five speeds of two miles an hour. It uh, was not very exciting at all. So that's why I got that custom cover on there. I cut the chain case apart and I flipped the gears. Woke it right up. Now you can dangle it around. She'll skid and goes pretty quick. I uh, ran the exhaust like the newer Yamahas, you know, goes straight through the tunnel, <laughs> straight out the back. Kind of looks like a funny anteater there. <laughs> we got the uh, shifter rigged up here with your feet. Got the clutch. I, uh, oh, oh, we might be uh, over before we even get started here. That sucker don't even move. We might have to uh, investigate that, but uh, hopefully we can get that going. I know JP, back in the summertime there, we were having issues with the uh, piranha buggy there. Thought it was a fuel pump, so JP robbed the electric fuel pump out of this that I had, so I think what I got to do is I'll drain out all the garbage fuel in here. I'll find that pump. I'll take it back off the piranha. Get it rigged back in here. I'll see about the clutch. Hopefully it's not uh, stuck, but uh, might be just because it's cold. Who knows? I'll uh, free it up and we'll get the charger on the battery. And I'll pull it outside and see if we can get her going. We'll see a smoke show. I 
out. I bought that pump a while ago back in the summertime just to have an electric fuel pump kicking around. I've got it wired up. It works. Uh, the fuel in there is pretty crappy. I need to drill that hole out a little bit bigger just to uh, have a spot to mount it. So I figured what better time to try. Focus, you son of a... Come on. I got these new bits off the Matco uh, tool guy. If it focused, I'd show ya. Come on. Okay, there we go. We got her to focus. That's a step bit. Now, all the drill bits in the kit are all like that. So, uh, I thought that was pretty cool. They kind of pile it through and, you know, center itself. Should stay sharp. So I figure we'll give her a try on uh, this, first time use. Not too shabby. So, got the fuel pump hooked back on, put some fresh fuel in it, pumped it through so we got clean fuel in the line. Why not give it a shot and see how she goes? Uh, got my fancy choke rod, it's a TIG, <laughs> TIG filler rod, bent it up, looped it through the arm of the choke, seems to work. Choke on, choke off. Give her a shot of the Mopar brake cleaner. I call this Mostart because uh, this stuff will start anything. If your engine doesn't start by spraying this stuff in there, you do not have spark or compression because this stuff is extremely flammable. So, give her a shot. been setting over a year. She just wants to go. Try her again. You can already smell the burnt oil though. Oh yeah, she's uh she's popping. We might have to pull this outside. All right, we uh, moved her outside so uh, we don't fill the shop full of smoke and kill myself, but uh, we'll see if it uh, will kick over and go again. I uh, hope the battery held enough of a charge. Let's see what happens here. Come on, Betsy. Oh, I can see fuel just running out of there. <laughs> Just a puffin. See if she'll idle.
Hmm, nice one. Come on, start back up, you piece of junk. I gotta give her the thumbs up for running after sitting so long, but uh, can't really say it runs that well. That carburetor is uh, no worky right. Now, uh, I forgot how much it smoked. Uh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's why I gotta, excuse me, rebuild the top end of that. We're gonna put a whole new cylinder piss in. I got a rebuild kit for the head. I, <laughs> I forgot too, it's missing couple of bolts holding the head down. So that might have something to do with it too. I was ripping this thing around in the summertime. Made my own little fan. All I did was, this thing would get pretty hot. I just found this electric motor. I forget what it's out of a blower motor or something like that. And then this fan was in the scrap pile. I just connected it with some rubber hose and zip ties. Muffler clamps welded to a bracket. But I mean, she's getting hot. Not bad, not bad. It's my biggest fan right there. All right, well, I guess over the holidays and whatnot, keep myself busy, we'll rebuild it. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I think I'm gonna end the video here. At least we got them both back up and going, you know. Uh, next video, maybe I'll uh, address the <laughs> rebuild on that one, old Smokey there, but uh, you know, it's good to see the old enticer up and going. You know, if you like what we're doing, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, hit the like button or comment if you want. And, uh, hey, if any of you know Larry Enticer, give him a heads up. You know, he can send that one or end it. Who cares? You know, I know it'll give his 300 Super Twin a run for its bunny, though. But uh, take her easy, guys.